Engine 6, Tower 10, reports of a house on fire from the residence. Engine 2, Engine 6, Tower 10. Tower 10 respond. Clear, Tower 10. Engine 6 responding. Engine 2 responding. Clear, Engine 2. Honor Guard! Post the colors! Power! Power! Invocation by Deacon Jim Kowalski, Hampton Fire Department Chaplain. Almighty God, we take a moment now to praise you, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Also, we thank you for your gifts of life and love that we now share with one another. Today, as we gather here to remember not only that fateful day 100 years ago, but all of the firefighters throughout the years who have given their lives and served us faithfully. And especially, we ask to remember those who are with us today we ask that you give them strength, courage, and perseverance as they go about each and every day performing their sworn duty. We ask these things in the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to the 100th anniversary of the Butler County Courthouse fire, which occurred on the afternoon of March 14, 1912. Three Hamilton firefighters lost their lives battling this fire. John M. Honker, William M. Love, George P. Fritz paid the ultimate sacrifice. Today, 100 years later, the courthouse they fought to, to save still stands. We're here to remember and honor their sacrifice. Our first speaker will be Hamilton Fire Chief Joseph Schutte. Thank you, Chief Dawson. Good afternoon. 100 years ago today, at this very hour, at 4.50 p.m., firefighter William Love of Fire Hamilton Fire Hose Company No. 1 died from injuries and burns he received earlier in the day fighting the fire at the Butler County Courthouse, the fire of March 14, 1912. He was the second of three firefighters who perished from injuries received at that fire. At approximately 11.30 a.m. on that fateful day, alarms rang out, alerting everyone that a fire in the clock tower of the Butler County Courthouse. It was discovered by Arson Lukens, a journal news reporter, and Barney Ellers, the courthouse elevator engineer. They were investigating the sudden loss of lighting in the glass dome above the rotunda and an accompanying cracking of timbers in the ceiling above. They took the elevator to the fourth floor of this building, exited, and opened a door leading to the unfinished fourth floor attic area. Life for this city, 
for this county and for the Hamilton Fire Department changed in that instant as they opened the door to what most certainly must have looked like hell itself. A raging inferno of fire and red smoke were engulfing the clock tower and the open attic of the courthouse. As the men gathered their wits about them to get out of there, the cable from the elevator which they had just exited snapped and the elevator fell down through the shaft. The fire department responded, of course, with the crew from hose company number one, located at Main and B Street, arriving first. Firefighters began stretching hose to the attic area via the stairwells and at the direction and commands of Fire Chief William Doty. The winding staircases made it difficult to deploy the lines quickly, and when they did reach the fire, they came up short. Chief Doty sent men back to retrieve more hose. Meanwhile, firefighters John Hunker, William Love, and George Fritz were among some of the men who remained in the building attacking the fire as best they could from the rotunda staircase, directing water onto the flames shooting from the skylight around the rotunda. At about 11.43 a.m., a mere 13 minutes from the time the fire was discovered and only a few minutes or so into the firefight and with little warning, the supporting structures of the clock tower gave way. The heavy and magnificent tower Copula and the goddess of justice statue standing majestically at the top of that tower collapsed and came crashing down into the rotunda through the second floor and landed in the basement sending debris and fragments into the streets. The massive collapse extinguished much of the fire. A gas fed fire remained from broken gas lines that were used to light the lobbies in the rotunda. Sadly, however, the crashing timbers and the massive heavy iron and steel structures of the clock tower took three Hamilton firefighters with them. Firefighter John Hunker was killed instantly under the weight of heavy beams and fire. Firefighter William Love was found alive but badly burned and, and also injured. He succumbed to his injuries at Mercy Hospital some five hours after being injured. Firefighter George Fritz was alive but badly burned. He was also taken to Mercy Hospital, where he lived for five days, but ultimately died from burns and injuries at 6.10 a.m. on Tuesday, March 19th. Hamilton Fire Stations were ordered to drape funeral bunting on their stations and to wear proper insignia on the left arm for a period of 30 days. John Hunker was 45 years old at the time of his death. He had been with the department about a year. His funeral was held at his residence on South C Street on Saturday after, after the fire, March 16th. He was buried in Greenwood Cemetery. William Love was 46 years old. He loved horses and spent his early life working in racing stables. He was appointed driver of Company One on September 13, 1903. At that time, in 1903, all Hamilton fire apparatus were pulled by horses. His funeral was held on Monday, March 18th at his residence on Franklin Street. He was buried in Greenwood Cemetery. It is interesting to note that for both funerals, there was no tolling of the fire bells en route to the cemetery. This was so firefighter Fritz, who was still clinging to life at Mercy Hospital, would not hear the bells, become depressed knowing that his comrades died, and possibly hasten his own death. George Fritz was 35 years old. He joined the department October 20th, 1900. When the first motorized trucks were purchased in 1911, just the year before the 1912 courthouse fire, department heads realized they had a young man well qualified to take charge of the new property. He was appointed driver of the one's new motorized truck, the truck that responded to the courthouse fire. Funeral services were held on Friday, March 22nd at the First Reformed Church with burial in Greenwood Cemetery. Fire bells were tolled at that funeral procession on its way to the cemetery, the first time since the three men perished. Newspaper accounts are full of stories of many organizations, associations, and ordinary citizens 
coming to the aid of the widows and families of the deceased firefighters. All were eulogized for their bravery and courage. It is obvious from the many newspaper articles that the community respected, cherished, and yes, loved these valiant and noble men. And we're grateful for their dedication and the ultimate sacrifice they made. March 14, 1912 still stands as the most tragic day in the history of the Hamilton Fire Department in terms of the number of firefighters lost at a fire. It is, it is a record that need not be broken. The remembrance of that day is a sobering reminder to firefighters of just how dangerous this job can be. It is a risk we all agreed to when we were sworn in as firefighters. It is a risk we accept each day as we pin that badge on our uniform shirt. The fire service has changed and changed dramatically since 1912. Better training, better personal protective clothing, better firefighting equipment and techniques, better risk management formula, incident command, rapid assist teams, standard operating procedures and guidelines have all been realized since firefighters Hunker, Love, and Fritz were fighting fires. Many of the terms I just mentioned would be foreign language to them. But just like firefighters Hunker, Love, and Fritz, firefighters today are prepared to stand in harm's way to save every life, protect everyone's property, and defend their communities against the ravages of fire, disaster, catastrophe, and tragedy. That sense of duty, that commitment to service, born in men like Hunker, Love, and Fritz, lives today in firefighters throughout this land. On behalf of all members of the Hamilton Fire Department, I want to thank Judge Randy Rogers, President of the Butler County Courthouse Historical Society, and its members for inviting us here today to be a part of this remembrance and commemoration of that historic event 100 years ago. To recognize those Hamilton firefighters whose firefighter family we are proud to be members of today. It means a lot to my firefighters and to me. It is evident by the numbers of retired firefighters who are here today and those active firefighters who are in uniform from Hamilton Fire Department and from outlying fire departments as well. Thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Bower County Prosecutor Michael Moser. Throughout the history of mankind, man's best friend and worst enemy has been a four-letter word, fire. As a friend, it heats our homes, it heats our food, runs all manner of machines, and is essential in time of war. As an enemy, it has no equal. When faced with this destructive force, there has always been those who answer the call for help. They answer the call to duty and we simply call them firemen, now both men and women. Today we honor only three we remember as heroes, but through them we honor all firemen who serve. Little wonder most all children aspire to be firemen. Even they know who the heroes are. 100 years ago, this courthouse stood as it stands today as a beacon of justice a symbol of our government, a gathering place for judges, lawyers, and the general public seeking a resolution for their day-to-day -day problems. It was a place that housed the offices of our government, the auditor, the recorder, the clerk of courts, the treasurer, and our county commissioners, all in this building. It was modern for its time, a handcrafted place to be protected and saved. And then came the fire, and firemen responded. These were men of great strength and courage. The job demanded both, as it still does to this day. With heavy hoses, primitive by modern standards, rudimentary cast brass equipment, an axe, 
and slow water pumping devices, these men had little but their own courage and dedication to see them through. In spite of their best efforts, the courthouse burned. And if you listen quietly, you may still hear the echoes of that fateful day, the crackling of burning timbers hidden in the walls, and wood lath belching smoke and fire, with sparkling embers swirling in the very place we are all seated today. Through it all, with this inferno raging around them, these three men we honor faithfully manned their posts of duty and gave their lives to preserve this, histor this historic symbol of our community values. Their sacrifice should never be forgotten, and thank you all for this day of remembrance. Our next speaker is Mayor of City of Hamilton, Patrick Mullen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. None of us here knew firefighters John Hunker, William Love, or George Fritz. But you know, we would have liked them. We would have liked them. They would have been great neighbors. John Hunker was born in Hamilton, was a machinist prior to becoming a fireman. He had a wife, a daughter, and sisters who all lived here in Hamilton, Ohio. William Love was from Indiana. He moved to our city. Married for only two years, his wife was by his side when he passed away. George Fritz was born in Hamilton, went to our public schools, was also a machinist, was married. He enjoyed membership in the fraternal organization, the Eagles. Away from work, they were like ordinary guys. But at work, at work, they were extraordinary men. They were at work on March 14, 1912. Firefighters Hunker, Love, and Fritz were at work where we stand and sit right now. In the midst of fire, falling and burning timbers, in the midst of rumors of citizens and fellow firefighters missing, caught in the fire, in the midst of the chaos of good-meaning employees and volunteers going in and out of this courthouse building saving county records, these Hamilton firefighters carried out their duties to save persons and property. So imagine the scene here 100 years ago. The Goddess of Justice sculpture at the top of the dome, 10 feet tall and 1,500 pounds, fell into the building and broke into pieces. The dome clock stopped at 11.33 a.m. And 10 minutes later, it crashed to the ground. The bell in the tower, which told every hour of the day, fell and cracked. Through miracle and through the bravery of the firefighters, the courthouse in which we stand now still stands. And there were no more than three fatalities. Long after the pallbearers from the Hamilton Fire Department carried the caskets of their three fallen brothers, long after the Police Mutual Aid Society in 1912 sadly passed a resolution extending sympathy to the families of the men cut down in the prime of life. Long after the memorial plaques were placed in this courthouse, the one is up there to my left, as well as memorial plaque placed in our Hamilton City building, recognizing the three fallen firefighters, you can hear the sounds of what the Journal News called, and what Prosecutor Moser mentioned, were the echoes of the fire. You can hear and you can picture three men climbing the stairs of this courthouse, carrying their water hose, and bravely facing danger, doing an extraordinary job. I'd like to thank Judge Rogers and Chief Joe Schutte and the committee 
for putting together this event. And on behalf of Hamilton City Council and City Administration, we have a memorial proclamation. If I could be joined up here on my left by Vice Mayor Fear and Councilmember Kathy Klink, and to my right by Chief Joe Schutte and Judge Rogers, I will read that memorial proclamation at this time. And actually I have two here. One is for Judge Rogers and the Butler County Historical Society, Courthouse Historical Society, and one is for Chief Joe Schutte and the Hamilton City Fire Department. Office of the Mayor and City Council Memorial Proclamation. Whereas Hamilton City Council and City Administration join the Butler County community to honor the memory of Hamilton City firefighters John Hunker, William Love, and George Fritz, who passed away as a result of the Butler County Courthouse fire of March 14, 1912. And whereas firefighters Hunker, Love, and Fritz, as member of host company number one, rushed to the scene of the electrical fire in the dome of the Butler County Courthouse. And whereas firefighters Hunker, Love, and Fritz carried water hose to battle the blaze up the courthouse stairway to the upper floors of the building where they became caught in burning and falling tower debris. And whereas firefighter John Hunker perished at the courthouse fire scene on March 14, 1912, firefighter William Love died later the same day, and firefighter George Fritz passed away five days later. All died performing their duties for the citizens of Hamilton and Butler County and their fellow firefighters. And whereas a tribute to the fallen firefighters by the city of Hamilton in 1912 exclaimed, what expression can convey to the survivors the appreciation that every citizen feels for duty well and courageously done? And whereas Reverend H. N. Kirst eulogized the lives of the firefighters by stating, no life is incomplete when a person dies for his fellow man or dies in the performance of his duty and concluded that the men face danger without fear when duty called. And now therefore, I, Pat Muller, Mayor of the City of Hamilton, Ohio, and Hamilton City Council members, in recognition of their loss of life, saving persons and property, forever dedicate the day of March 14, 2012, to the memory of Firefighter John Hunker, Firefighter William Love, and Firefighter George Fritz, here in the City of Hamilton, Ohio. Signed by myself and acknowledged by all members of Council. I want to give this one, if I could, to Chief Joe Schutte. I'd like to give this one to Judge Rodgers. And thank you all for being here and making this a very special day in Hamilton, Ohio, in memory of these fallen firefighters. Thank you very much. When I am called to duty, God, wherever flames may rage, Give me strength to save some life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it is too late, or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout, and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and to give the best in me to guard my every neighbor and protect his property. And if according to my fate, I am to lose my life, Please bless with your protecting hand my children and my wife. Our next speaker is Judge Randy Rogers, Butler County Probate Judge and also President of the Butler County Courthouse Historical Society. Service and sacrifice. These words define the legacy of William Love, John Hunker, and George Fritz. In the news reports that followed this tragic fire, it struck this courthouse 100 years ago. It was said of the three, these brave firemen laid down their lives to protect the property of this community. They have been faithful servants to us, always true and loyal to their vows. Service, sacrifice, faithfulness, loyalty. These words all define attributes of character that were necessary a hundred years ago. These same words describe attributes of character that are needed today to meet the challenges and the adverse conditions that we as individuals and we as communities 
face now. That's why we gather here for this celebration. That's why we gather here to remember what happened then and to celebrate what's happening today. To draw inspiration from those who have gone before us, to use their sacrifices and their responses to their adversity as examples for us to follow. At the memorial service for William Love, one speaker said, there is no greater honor that can be conferred upon any man than that of being permitted to lose his life upholding the right or striving to perform to the best of his ability his duty. That pronouncement was true then, and it remains true today. The sacrifice of these men is worthy of our remembrance. But there's more to remember about this historic event. As Mr. Moser mentioned, a hundred years ago, this courthouse was not just a place where the various county officers, offices were located, but it was a symbol it was a symbol of the strength and the authority of the American institution of self-government, an institution upon which the foundation of our nation was built. The fire of 1912 killed three men, but it also galvanized the resolve of this community, this city, this county, to not bow to difficult circumstances, to not allow adversity to triumph. Just as William Love, John Hunker, and George Fritz did not quit and gave their all, neither did this community surrender to the adverse circumstances they faced. They lost three of their own, but they were determined not to lose this courthouse, which to them was a symbol of their government. They knew that the strength and the authority of government was the very thing that brought order to this society. The faith of our ancestors gave them hope, but it was government that gave them order, and they understood that. When the tower came crashing down through the center of this building, the office of then probate judge John Connaughton, grandfather of J.B. Connaughton, many of us knew, was still open. It was in that corner of the building. According to the news reports of the day, people in this rotunda rushed into that office and it became, quote, a haven of safety for many. People were stunned. They were shocked, they were dazed by the unexpected devastation, but the people found a way to keep going. And their reactions are an illustrated lesson to us today, and one from which we can learn by their example. In reading the newspaper published the following day, one can find this report. When the blaze was at its height, a man named John Seitz from Middletown wanted a marriage license and sought out Judge Connaughton, who took care of the matter. This was after the fire, on the day of the fire. Judge Connaughton was determined. He would not bow to the adversity they faced. He showed his appreciation for that sacrifice by keeping on, keeping on. Another man named William Hoover was so anxious to wed that day, he feared he would be disappointed. So he went to Newport. But when he found an Ohio minister could not marry with a Kentucky license, he returned. And he was accommodated by Judge Connaughton that night. I looked at those old records last week. I have the certified copies of their marriage licenses. If you'd like to see them today, they're in the room next door. By themselves, 
A couple of marriage licenses may seem like a small thing, but not those licenses. They're a symbol of the resolve of the survivors of that fire to not, not let negativity control their actions. A lesson to be learned today. Judge Connaughton was just one of thousands in this community who refused to allow adversity to triumph. And the citizens of this community just kept going on. And they never quit. Judge Gard, one of the two common pleas judges at that time, Judge Gard and Judge Murphy. Judge Gard started a case on Thursday, the day of the fire. The case was not concluded when the fire broke out. Judge Gard did not bow to the circumstances. The next day, they found a place called Lindley Hall. It had been a moving picture theater and then a dance hall. Judge Gard reconvened his court on Friday, the day following the fire at 10 a.m. and he finished the case. His bench was a beat up old table in front of a small stage. On top of the stage there was a scenery that was for a play. It was a streetscape by coincidence, the case that Judge Gard was trying was about an assessment over sidewalks in front of a property owner's house next to the street. So fitting. What a coincidence. Judge Gard finished that case the next day. As I look out, I see Judge Moser. If Judge Moser had been here, he would have finished that case the next day. Within days of the fire, the county commissioners, quote, figured upon remodeling to use all the fourth floor of the building for office purposes. Before, it was an attic. But the commissioners were resolute in their determination to rebuild and to rebuild bigger and better. Commissioners were not alone. Again, according to the news reports, the public absolutely demanded the repairing of the large clock. And architects George A. Barkman and Frederick, Frederick G. Mueller were immediately asked to jointly prepare the plans. Only three people died during that fire. Some think that's a miracle, given the magnitude of the destruction. No records were lost. Some think that was a miracle, given the chaos that followed the fall of the clock tower. Those that survived did not allow the sacrifice of the three to be in vain. They demonstrated in a very tangible way their appreciation for that sacrifice by persevering, by carrying on. They did not quit. At the memorial service, for these fallen firemen, the entire community came together. And in words uttered by one grieving boyhood friend, William Love, collectively they acknowledged in the path of life, there may be rough places. There may be steep hills. There may be bogs and hot sands to cross, which require faithfulness and courage to pass through. It was also said during those memorial services, while this city as a whole and the families of these men are plunging into sorrow, there is one great consolation. We know that rather than flee danger, these men met their death. They made no effort to escape. They did not forsake their post. They were true, even to the end. A hundred years ago, it was said, for years to come, this should be an inspiration to everyone in this community. There is nothing that we prize so highly as life, yet rather than forsake their post in time of danger, these men gave up their dearest possession, 
It is a wonderful lesson to all of us to be true to the end. And finally, it was said 100 years ago, the memory of these men will ever live in this city and in this community and will stimulate us to be faithful to the end. God help us to show such courage and faithfulness as these men have done in sacrificing their lives. The words that were spoken by the friends of those three firemen a hundred years ago apply today. They were true to the end. They did not quit. The community did not quit. It also remained true to the same ideals for which those three men sacrificed. It was a time when people came together. They persevered. They did not let adversity triumph. And as we face our challenges today, neither should we. Thank you, William Love. Thank you, John Hunker. Thank you, George Fritz. Thank you, Judge Connaughton. Thank you, Judge Garb. Thank you, men and women of 1912. Thank you for what you did when you faced your adversity. We appreciate what you did. Your example is our inspiration. You were true to the end. And with God's help, so will we be true to the end. The fire service of today is ever-changing, but it is steeped in traditions some 200 years old. One such tradition is the sounding of the bell. In the past, as firefighters began their tour of duty, it was the bell that signaled the beginning of that day's shift. Through the day and night, each alarm was sounded by a bell, which summoned these brave souls to fight fires and to place their lives in jeopardy for the good of their fellow man. And when the fire was out and the alarm had come to an end, it was the bell that signaled to all the completion of that call. When a firefighter had died, it was the mournful toll of the bell that solemnly announced a comrade's passing. We utilize these traditions as symbols which reflect honor and respect on those who have given so much and who have served so well. To symbolize the devotion that these brave souls had for their duty, a special signal of three rings, three times each, represents the end of our comrade's duties and that he will be returning to quarters. And so to our fallen brothers, firefighters John M. Hunker, William M. Love, and George P. Fritz, who had selflessly devoted their lives for the good of their fellow man, their tasks completed, their duties well done, to our comrades who made the ultimate sacrifice 100 years ago this day, in this building, their last alarm, they have gone home. Honor Guard, retire the colors.
As was so eloquently presented by our speaker, Judge Rogers, it is incumbent upon us to carry on the traditions of service that have preceded us here in Hamilton and Butler County. In order to do that, and before we go our separate ways, let us turn to God and ask that he send his blessing upon us and that he keep us faithful in his service and faithful to his teachings all the days of our lives. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you all for coming.